Hello. All right, so I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Gotenna today, but before I really start with that, I'm actually going to start with a kind of a rhetorical question, which is what is the most important information you need in the battlefield or beyond the battlefield, a wildland firefighting situation, a disaster response, whatever it is? I'm on a 10-minute timer, but I actually want you guys to think about it. What is the most important information you need to be able to, to respond safely, efficiently, and quickly? Well, I think most people would agree that you need to know where are your people, where are the dangers, and can you get commands in and out? You know, in other words, you know, to kind of, you know, summarize it up into something that's more a little bit buzzy, it's situational awareness. You know, you need to know where the people are, you need to know what the lay of the land is so that you can respond effectively. And you need to be able to get those commands in and out so you can marshal your assets and, you know, attack the problem the best way you can. I think most people would agree that that is the most critical information you need in almost any operational environment. And there's another question that we have, which is, what do all these components of situational awareness and command and control have in common? The funny thing that most people don't seem to be, have realized over time is that none of those components of situational awareness need broadband. They don't need full motion video. As a matter of fact, they don't even need voice in a lot of situations. And a lot of times it's even better to not do it through voice. Yet every communications, tactical, radio system, anything that's out there in the field right now, it all is focused just on optimizing on, you know, broadband, 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 video, video, video. It's kind of the, the soup du jour, you know, recently is that's what everyone wants. But you don't technically need them in a lot of environments. And that's not to, you know, to knock on full motion video and those other things. We totally understand that there's going to be places where you do need that. But in many situations, you don't. I mean, we've gone, you know, 10,000 years of emergency and warfare without full motion video. You know, why did we all of a sudden need it starting a couple years ago? And what we wanted to ask is what happens if you built a tactical communication system which was focused just on doing one thing and one thing really, really well, which is to get you that critical information no matter what. Just that, you know, that SA, that C2, trim away all the extras and, you know, give you a system built from the ground up for those things that you know that you need. Well, what you would get is this little guy right here. This is the Gotenna Pro. What you're seeing here, this little snicker-sized, you know, piece of plastic and metal, is a full 5-watt VHF UHF mesh networking tactical radio that when I say it's the world's smallest, lightest, and most affordable tactical mesh networking radio on the planet, that sounds like marketing, but that's actually objectively true. You could put it on a Excel sheet and put it next to anything else out there, and that's just how it measures up. So, you know, what you've got here on this device is, you know, 5 watts of tunability across VHF and UHF as a software-defined radio. It's mesh networked. It has uh, three to four bit elliptic curve top secret level encryption. Um, it's IP68 in mil spec, uh, weighs you know, about 79 grams, and it's designed from the, from the ground up to work with iOS and Android, so any smartphone. And it all comes together, all these capabilities to allow you to communicate, you know, kind of short form burst, you know, situational awareness command and control information, and it's all just $499, which for most people here is almost a laughable amount of money. You know, probably I'm the only vendor out here that's actually going to put their price tag on the, on the board because usually we're talking much larger numbers. And we think that's pretty important to enabling new kinds of capabilities that I'll get to in just a second. So, you know, kind of visually to put it, by trimming away all the fat to answer the question before and focusing just on critical information, we're able to get you a radio that's a tenth of the size, a twelfth of the weight, a twentieth of the energy, and depending on who you're comparing us to, anywhere from a twentieth to a fortieth or more of the cost of anything else that's out there. And again, this enables new architectures that I'll get to in just a second. So how does it work? Um, it basically pairs with a smartphone, iOS or Android, and on that phone, that phone is your end user device. It's where you, you know, create data, you consume data. It gets, you know, goes over Bluetooth to the device itself, and then this device creates its own ad hoc mesh network where you can communicate with anyone you want. Now, um, what else is there here? Hold on. And also, <laughs> we're fully ATAC integrated. So for the people that are doing those kind of front-end operations, that's pretty, you know, pretty interesting because we are an open platform. 
so that anyone can integrate the Gotenna communications capabilities into any of their own apps or computers or sensors or anything they want. They can use us as an open platform for that very, you know, low cost, you know, low complexity but high quality communications data link. Um, and also it's completely COTS, not ITAR restricted, not export controlled. It's something that you can really get out there to anyone. And again, that's going to come back to some of the new applications that we think are pretty compelling. So again, going back to kind of the rhetorical questions is like, what could you do if your tactical radio wasn't the size and weight of a brick, it didn't cost over $10,000, $20,000, and it worked just right out of the box. You didn't have to go for a week of training in some other city so that your calm 18 Echo guy can figure out how to train it and, you know, what if you got rid of all those things? What could you do? Well, here are some ideas. You know, you could literally duct tape one of these units to a commercial drone, fly it up in the air, and now you've got a flying base station that's covering dozens of miles of, you know, communications in, any, in almost any environment. As a matter of fact, we did an air-to-ground test with the Colorado um, Department, uh, Department of Public Safety where this little guy was doing 47 miles air-to-ground and it just basically got, you know, SMA connected straight into the aircraft and was ready to roll. You know, you could actually send out an operator with two or three of these because they're so light and low cost, they could just start, you know, dropping them on the ground and, you know, going into tunnels, triple canopy environments, buildings, other places that are RF denied, and building a pop-up mesh, me mesh network as they're running in there and still keeping that comms no matter what. You know, you could also layer it in with other, other communication systems. So we're not saying that we're a replacement for, other, you know, those other tactical radios. We know that they're important. They do a lot more stuff. But maybe now you have one guy with a big man pack and everyone else is on Gotenna, and you can push out the value of that, ma of that man pack like a gateway node and multiply the value of that legacy system as well as multiply the legacy, the power of Gotenna itself. That's actually what the ATAC guys did already. If you've got 12 guys on Gotenna out in the field and one of them's got one bar of 3G or SATCOM or whatever it is, it will actually backhaul directly to the TAC server and pull all that COT, all that PLI, all that text into the server through just one node and essentially do that communications force multiplication. And, you know, going back to kind of the low cost and, you know, ITAR restrictions, this is ideal for partner force communications. How do you get out, how do you get somebody on your network if you can't give them a $15,000 type one, you know, secured radio? What's your options? There's not a whole lot right now. But for 500 bucks and a secure network that, you know, if you lose it because you were breadcrumbing it or somebody doesn't give back, it's kind of consumable. And that allows you to do new things you never really could have done before. It really allows you to, you know, technically a lot of things I just said, sure, you could do it with another mesh networking radio, but you're not going to be breadcrumbing a $15,000 radio that weighs four pounds. And it kind of changes the question of like what's technically possible to what's practically possible. When all that sounds a little bit cheesy, we say we're extending the practical tactical edge. Unlike, you know, some other systems that can technically do it, we can really do it in a way that's realistic in the field. Um, so we kind of go back again to the question, what can you do with a tactical radio that becomes truly accessible across, across all metrics of size, weight, power, cost, and complexity, that you can really just put this into the hands of anyone and just get them ready to roll? We think a whole lot. That's it. Thank you. Um, any questions? Yeah? Excuse me? Oh, yeah, sorry. I think I have one more slide. Uh, that's some of our users. Um, I had to kind of, you know, boil it up to, you know, not the specific user groups. If you guys want to talk to me on the side, I can give you some of the specific teams that are using it already. And we started as a consumer product, so you can actually buy our first couple of models at REI and Amazon right now. And they took out those models, and those are already the people who are using it, you know, across a lot of the same people that you want to, you know, be talking about. As a matter of fact, I think there's 60 or 70 of our units out in Mosul right now uh, on our consumer side. So there's a lot of different application spaces, and I'd be happy to go into more detail about that, you know, not in a giant room. Anyone else? No? All right, cool. I'll be over here if anyone has any questions.